For centuries, India was the fabled land of untold riches. It attracted travelers from distant lands, across the seas, deserts, and some of the highest mountains in the world, the Himalayas. The Himalayas gave the country many rivers, the Yamuna, Indus, and the most sacred river of all, the Ganga. Along these rivers, great civilizations flourished. They date back to 2600 BC and are evidence of sophisticated and well-planned cities. One of the oldest democratic republics in the world is at Vaishali, a prosperous and thriving town in the 6th century BC. The Nalanda University in the 5th century AD was a major center of learning, attracting students from as far away as China and Japan. Ayurveda, astronomy, mathematics, surgery, meditation, and yoga were disciplines that had early beginnings in India. India is also the cradle of many religions. The oldest is Hinduism. Hinduism is essentially a way of life that can help to understand the eternal truth. It attributes divinity to nature and all things living. Buddhism, Jainism, and Sikhism were all born here. Later, Islam and Christianity came from the West. All were assimilated effortlessly into the religious and social fabric of the country. These have given India a kaleidoscope of colorful festivals. Besides travelers and missionaries, invaders too came to India. Some made it their home. The Mughal dynasty was started by Babur in the 16th century. It lasted about 300 years and greatly influenced the culture of the country, especially its architecture. The Taj Mahal still stands today as a symbol of the love and passion of the emperor who built it, Shah Jahan. But by the middle of the 19th century, the weakened Mughal rule was easily overthrown by the British. The British had been coming to India as traders since the 15th century, but their trade became secondary as their ambitions of imperial expansion grew. The takeover was made easier because of the number of wealthy but warring Maharajas in the country, a country with a fascinating diversity of terrain and magnificent wildlife.
1911, the British set up their new capital in Delhi. The British rule deeply affected the self-esteem and morale of the country. But a few hundred years of colonial rule could only be an aberration in the history of such an ancient land. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi returned to India from South Africa in 1915. From the Sabarmati Ashram in Ahmedabad, he met with leaders and freedom fighters. He gave the world the concept of ahimsa or non-violence and used non-cooperation to overthrow foreign rule. Under him, the freedom movement gained momentum and on the 15th of August, 1947, India became an independent nation. Post-independent India struggled to create a modern, democratic and secular nation. Self-sufficiency in food and overall development were priorities. The panchayat system tried to ensure that democracy began at the grassroots. Women were given 33% reservation so that they too were involved in decision making. Special laws provided job opportunities for women and the underprivileged. Education gradually became the goal for people across the country. But perhaps India's greatest achievements in the 21st century are IT related. These have helped to bridge distances, not only in India, but have also brought the world closer. Once again, as before, travelers are coming to India to explore opportunities in trade and investment. As the world's largest democracy, India's rich human resource of young trained professionals are helping to give the country one of the fastest growing economies in the world. And yet, perhaps it is its unique heritage, ever present, that still defines the essence of India.